this is I did want to talk a little bit more um, what you know the, about the ref object URI and uh, in, it's in the top of the constants file this is a little bit more techy but again it allows you to as I was saying it allows you to get the the types that are whoops that are types that are valid for a particular type of object in this case a Louis or a course offering or whatever um, and you get the number of the allowed types for a type again they get the subterms that are allowed for a term and then the group get the milestones that are you know typically all day events or whatever and um, and, and so you know those are the, the, the already predefined um, ways of grouping them allowed and and uh, type and subtype but it's possible we could come up with other ways of, of, of connecting types to other types um, and so you know one option we know about is, is possibly proceeds which would then allow us to maybe manage um, that this type typically precedes the other type in some sort of order and structure or something like that um, or that it, that it contains but right now these are the two that we found that are you know that we have need in the business um, but we it's, it's expansible too just like um, types in general are extend, you know extendable we have this thing called a type type relationship type and we may need more types more ways of relating types and, and so that's that's also something that eventually we might want to add some more to so. hey, hey, no, I'm, not, I'm sorry if I missed it what is URI? Okay. <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry if I missed it what is URI? Um, uniform resource indicator I, okay. Yeah, maybe it's not a good a good. It's like a URL. Okay. It's, it's the same okay. thing as URL, but it's this is to do that. You know, these are web services, and so yep. basically, it's the URI is the namespace of the service plus the name of the object. Okay. I don't know how to explain Thank it, but you. that it's a way of identifying you know a clue. You know, the 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 idea of a clue and what its structure is and whatnot. Right. I know everybody else is wondering, so I figured I'd just ask. Yeah, but it's the object. So that but that's <laughs> but what I mean. So it's. How you could get all the types that are valid for a particular object in the system. So. Okay. It, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Could you explain the, the concept of a group again? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the, the first thing is you just might list all the different types that you've got, right? We've said, you know, wow, you know, we know that people want to be able to group. To create, they, they 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 would often refer to these things as, um, in terms of their group. So just, um, I'll give you an example from curriculum management. They would, they would they would refer to, you know, that's a program. Well, there's no there's no you know learning unit type called program. There's actually a bunch of them called, um, you know, major and minor and uh, a credential program and you know and whatever and um, and certificate program and 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 core program. Um, but but often they might want to say, well, yeah, but I just want all of them. And so the idea is that, well, well let's define something called a, a group type, and you would maybe you would call it, you know, quality dot, you know, a program, and then you would then say, let's link that one to using the grouping relationship to say this is a group of other types, and so then you would sit there and put a, put a relationship and you would map them all. You would say, you know, the, the idea of program is mapped to the major, the minor, the so you could then tell a programmer, give me, you know, give me, I want this screen to show me all of the programs in the system. You could easily do that because they, you, the, the programmer would just code in that program. They would use it to look up the other types, the actual real types, and then do the searches in the, in the system in order to get them. So the, that's what we're, we've come up with groups for. And, it's, you know, we can use it for, as I said, for, for, for selecting, for sorting, for, for displaying on screen. You know, for for manipulating in rules, you can say you know that all the, all those same purposes that other types are used for, but it's just a way of referencing a a, a collection of other types. So I think what you'll find, um, I mean, what was a little bit not surprising, but a lot of this stuff, type, state, group, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? I mean, I think for a lot of us it was mysterious initially, like ooh, type, state, type, state, configuration, ooh, mystery, mystery. And then you start digging in, and the type's exactly what it sounds like. It's different types of things, you know, a state, kind of exactly what it sounds like. So I think what's so great and, about and this And groups are exactly what they and, sound like. Yeah, that's exactly. It. it really helps demystify a lot of this stuff, and I think that's what's so valuable of this training. It's like, oh, all right, just a group. So really helpful, Norm. Thanks. But, but again, you want to name the groups in a way that people know about, because, again, that group could be then coded into a rule. And you want it to make sure it's mapped to the right to the right types of things, and it has the, exactly the same kind of typing 
uh, you know, that you might do on a, on, a, on a regular, you know, sort of what you would say a regular type. But it just allows you to sort of say reference, you know, a collection of them at once instead of referencing each one of them individually in a rule. Okay. Um, so then th this is actually more just nuts and bolts about how you might actually define the grouping. And this was more, you know, more, more for developers, but just, it gives you a sense of it. You know, you know, first you find the types, you just list them, you know, you know key date. You, you would define, you know, the, the group type, and you put the word group in the middle there, right? And, and then you would sort of map that group type. Actually, this should say holiday, holiday here. That S should be gone here. Um, or it should be down here. I'm not sure which one. But you would, you know, map that to whatever holiday you would actually have. And you'd say that the, the relationship between the two is actually, you know, this thing, this type, which is Kuali type, type relation type group. It, that's what I mean. It's a little tongue twister, but it basically is saying, you know, th this is a, a, a way of grouping other types. So, and, and that's what would actually be coded in the system, and you'd then be allowed, you know, be able to manage them. Um, and then you could start referencing that, and you could say things like, well, give me all the milestones that are holidays, you know, and it just makes it much easier to do than always listing the same thing. Um, hey, hey, Norm, point of clarification. Okay. Um, I hadn't thought about this. Are, are, are we expecting for, for groups and all this to, to go through the change process as well, or have, have you given that any thought? I haven't, frankly. I, I, haven't, I haven't really. I mean, I just, I, I, but again, when, when I said that, you know, um, groups, you really do need a certain amount of agreement on them. In other words, I, yeah. you know, like I even agree, the, the yeah. word holiday, because, it's, it, again, it's what people refer to them by. Yeah. And you, yeah. you sort of want people to say, oh, holiday, I know what those mean. You know, if you I would think call we just this, made a decision. <laughs> yeah. I agree. So, I think we just made a decision. They should go through the change process as well. But, but on the other Perfect. hand, yeah. they are probably going to be the kind that fly through faster, you know? Yep, yep. Because they're just yep. non they're, you know. Yeah. Okay, um, and then the last thing is, and I is that I had promised to talk about types and states and how they work in the dictionary. And unfortunately, I really can't show you much, and especially can't show you any code. Um, but I can just at least talk to the talk to the point. Um, it's you know, as I said, the you know the types and the states often drive what's allowed and what's required and. And, uh, you know, it might even change sort of the length, you know, that you're expecting on the field and whatnot. Um, so that, for example, you may allow a longer, a longer, a longer piece of, uh, a longer title when something's in draft and just make them, force, it, force them to, to cut it down to 22 characters so it'll fit on the transcript when they actually, actually get it approved or proposed or whatever when you submit it. Um, but you, you can change a lot of things based on the, the, the type and the state. And basically the way it's done is that there's a thing called a cross-field constraint that KRAT has. And, it, and, it would, and we don't have a mechanism for actually you doing this configuration yet or anybody really doing this yet, but it's because it's stored in all these XML spring beans and, and, um, and so we've got to be able to code them in too. And so that's just, just lets you know that that's how it would be done and we don't, again, we don't have a mechanism for right now for doing that. I just know that during the curriculum management, there are a lot of them. We had to put a lot of them in. So again, it's really important to sort of you know make sure we get these types and states nailed down because once we do put them into the uh, the, the dictionaries, especially, you know they they're they're harder to figure out you know, where they are, where they all are, um, how to, you know if we need to change them, where you know it's it's not as easy to change them and that kind of a thing. So, um, but it does it does allow you to say you know if the type is this then make this field, you know, required. If the type is this other thing, then um, make this field so you can't enter it. You know, it's, it's, it makes it so it's not only not required, but you, it's, it's not inputable. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do and, with cross-field constraints. And, and it's a general constraint, but it, what we found, is because they are natural categories for the, the objects, that, that most of the cross-field constraints involve types and states. It's just that's because that's what people are really trying to manipulate in. They're trying to say, well, if it's this type, then do this. If it's this state, then do that, that kind of thing. Hey, Norm, uh, uh, you're, you're going to provide dictionary training. Yeah, and that's going to yeah. come later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. okay. Great, thanks.
Um, so, okay, this was the, the restatement of the, of the procedure. Um, I knew I had to put it in here somewhere, and it, so that's the same thing we had just gone through. Um, oops. <laughs> and I forgot, so I didn't do all that, but we already went over that anyway, so that's okay. And that's it. So are there any questions? I think we've got some here from Taryn. Yeah. Um, well, so I have a question. I this isn't. It's not really well formed, and it may not be for you, Norm. This may be something that Carol will silence me and tell me she'll yeah. talk to me about later. But um, I'm still a little bit confused, kind of, about how these interact with actual data and potentially implementation. And I, I guess I don't understand. So, like, in the absence of a type, what happens when you try and load data or when you go to implement? Oh, or, you know, do we, do we need okay. these types to implement? Yeah, well, let me, yeah, 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 let me just, again, when we said, no, let me, let me answer that. I mean, that's an absolutely great question. That's, um, types and states are, not only do we put them on every object, they are required on every object. Okay. You cannot load data without assigning them a type and a, and, and a state. Okay. So they're absolutely critical to know what they are. And it's critical to get them right so you can actually load data. So if we tried to load Christmas without the Christmas holiday type, what would happen to Christmas? Mm. Again, it, it, to me it's almost like a non sequitur. It, would, it should bounce out okay. and say that it's a required field. Okay. Okay. Cause type I'm is a required field. Because sort of, that seems like that's, because I'm trying to figure out how I would know when we need to create a new type and state, but it sounds like if there's data that we need to load that doesn't have it, 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 it's supposed to say that that's an error and it doesn't and it doesn't uh, it doesn't accept the data if it, if, yeah, if it, if it just, accepts the data with it but the, with no or blank values or or strange values in the field then we're not doing things right there's a there's a problem with the code and we need to fix it so well let's make sure you understand I'm not trusting Karen because it is a great question I think I want to make sure that we're we're asking the same question here I think what we're saying is, like, we have a bunch of reference data from UW, for instance, mm -hmm. and say we have a bunch of holidays and we've got Columbus Day, but we have not yet configured the holiday type of Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. Now, we've had some conflicting messages like, oh, just load it up because it doesn't matter if we end up using it or not, right? Is this where you're getting at? Like, so what yeah. happens if we don't have that type already configured? Does the data just sit there and not get used? Does the data get tossed out? Is it going to crap out the application? Like I, I, I'm saying, it shouldn't even get loaded. It should. It should not even. It should be refused to, to load. Okay. It should make it pass go. All right. Right. Because those are required are fields. Are you thinking so if you that put, or are you knowing that? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I know that the data models <laughs> require require them. I don't know how much validation goes on in terms of the. Um, the, you know, the validation of the actual string to make sure that it's, it's, it's matching. Okay. But I know that okay. it's a required field, absolutely required field. Okay. So you can't put nulls in there or blanks, you know, or empty or whatever. So, okay, so that makes sense. I guess I'm still thinking a little bit about then um, in terms of implementation and trying to understand how an implementing institution uses these in the future and they use them as an example that then they would go ahead and put their usc.kowali or do, you know usc.whatever.xxx on them or are they going to use the kowali.xxx type? The, you know, the assumption so is that, that, that the kowali one had, excuse me, sorry. Sorry, are they, are they are these meant to be like an a example sample type? Of type list of types. <laughs> no, no, the, 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 yeah, I mean, that, okay. The, the quality ones are are actually intended to be ones that you would choose typically choose from that they cover the the, the the enough of the spectrum of most of the implementing institutions would would choose one of the at least one of those types as you know their way of doing business. Having said that, you know we we haven't done a complete exhaustive analysis of every single university, so we don't know what may run what we may run up may run up against. So in the like in the appointment window one that we were talking about where there's you know there's different ways of generating the appointment slots and there I think we we we've come up with and we surveyed it you know there's there's you know the sort of the UW way where you make one giant slot and all students go into that slot that are in those populations 
you know, in that in that category, right? Um, and then the other one really is is that you generate a bunch of like you know smaller smaller windows or smaller slots, you know, within that overall window, and students get assigned in some order to those slots. I mean, well, if somebody comes up with yet a completely other other way of doing this business that we haven't covered, and you know, so we've got a couple of variations on that second one too. We've already got covered. Uh, sure, they'll they'll have to come up with their own their own type, and then then that would then drive the information that they would need in order to to generate their slots. So, I mean, do, do you get what I'm saying? I do, yeah. Okay. You know, Norm, I, I just realized I, I think holiday you know, milestones are just a strange animal because it's. I mean, I think when you're saying types the required field, that's the assumption that the object is you're going to use the object. And milestones, it was like we could add them or not add them. So it's a little bit of a different animal, if you understand. I don't know if I'm articulating that clearly, but yeah, you know, if we were going to do milestone, if we were going to do a milestone of Christmas, yeah, then then it's required. But the question was, do we even do we even add need it for milestone? anything? Yeah, yeah, period. Which is not going to be the case with appointment slots. You need appointment slots. Yeah. So the type, yeah. what the type is, is different. So I think we were bumping up against a kind of a different set of issues in M1 just with. Because we had to ask the question, do we even want it or not? Right. If that right. makes any sense. Yeah. No, I, I totally understand that. Yeah, and and you know, in in and so holidays were were and have been unfortunately sort of the oddball one with this anyway, uh -huh. because it's 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 possible the types could have been, and this is I told you it's a it's a it's an art not a science. You, we could have had uh, uh, just two two types that covered all of the holidays, one called instructional holiday, one called non-instructional holiday, or something along those lines, right? Yeah. And then the yeah. other ones were just, did you just, you just said, okay, it's, a, it's an instructional holiday, you pick it, and you put in the date and time and the description and whatnot, right? The, yeah. What it, it, the, the reason why we didn't do that is that what we found is that people built rules. When we talked to people about it, they would do things like, okay, well, our term starts the second Monday after Labor Day. Well, I, if I have to code that that you know that rule about how to how to set them up, I have to I have to, and I don't want to you know I want to decode it against something something called Labor Day, and so that yeah, right. so that so and and this was and these were things that I sort of created. This was in curriculum management based on old data, you know, but that was sort of the basis for that yeah. in, the, in the beginning um, to go down to that fine finer grained level of the type. So, yep. Again, art, art, not a science. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to distinguish. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to distinguish Labor Day from Christmas if you just had non-instructional. Right, yeah. and 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 we found is people sometimes wrote some rules that related to them. So that was what I said. Let's just go down to that level, and it's yeah, it's an odd. It's sort of odd compared to sort of the rest of the kind of types in the system. Yeah. Great. So, Norm, I have this is Virginia. I have one question, a, a point of clarification. Um, one thing I ran into for curriculum management was knowing the difference between types that are hard-coded, embedded in, you know, they're in code, so you can't change them, that that type has to exist, mm -hmm. and those types that were totally, you know, we come up with our own types. Now, I think I heard you saying that for enrollment, you have uh, the types that begin with Kuali will be the hard-coded ones, those have to be there. And the ones that begin with ref will be the ones that are disposable or can be changed for you know individual institutions. Right, right. Um, I'm not sure that's the axes we were talking about, Norm. I think yeah. I, I don't know that we made the distinction of hard coded versus you know or, or must be there versus don't have to be there. We were right. talking more about about use like general uses like quality. So you could have a quality one that's hard coded or not and you could have a rough one that's hard coded or not. I guess I don't really know, understand what hard coded means in this scenario. It, 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 you know, I'm I mean, presuming it means that it actually it was used in some sort of rule. Maybe it was used in a routing rule so it, it looked for, you know, the actual different types of organizations. I'm thinking of the example. Kamal just said they were Kamal just described them, that that rule type was embedded in code. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that um, is true in some of in some of these types. And that's and that's true, and I don't. Um, credit course, I believe. Quali dot. Yeah, yeah. So Quali credit course definitely, definitely is right. Do you so. not want to use that? <laughs> well, we don't okay. differentiate between credit course. Uh, yeah, and credit course. Yeah. We just have course. Yeah. 
we have to use predators. Yeah, you know, in, in, but I understand anything what you're saying. So, so, say that again. Is that say anything that? to explore, like some sort of differentiator there, or? Yeah. Well, you no, know, I, I mean, I'm actually chewing on it right now in my brain about how to how to how to tell about this, and, and the, the problem is sometimes it's it. How can I say it? Sometimes the the type is 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 quote hard coded and so it has to exist and you can't you can't delete it and you can't remove it um, period right. but other times and it, it it's because it you know there was no other way to do it but hard coded in in in, in some sort of piece of code that that you you can't really easily change um, sometimes these types are hard coded in because we didn't have the time to actually make it more softer coded, and I don't know how to explain that. Like sometimes, and I saw this during curriculum management. Like sometimes they would build a drop down list by putting into the code these are the three types that you can pick, instead of driving it off of uh, off of a a, a a a group that maybe was would be defined. Do you, do you get what the difference is? So, so that then what shows up is is something that is embedded in the code, and to change that, you go, oh, I have to change the code, and that's more um, about sort of managing and monitoring the coding practices that we've got, so that we we do as little of that as possible. That kind of the second kind of thing. Um, certain ones we you know you just can't avoid. Like I said, if you you know we, we're going to be having to code. If you have a section of the screen that says display holidays, that it needs to at least you know that section of the screen has to say, oh. I have to point, you know, have embedded in my code this group type called holidays. But what hopefully it isn't embedded in its code is Veterans Day, um, Columbus Day, you know, Christmas, so that right. when it gets put off, you know, the, the you know Canada, Canadian and schools get it, and it, and it has to change it just for that. So that that's the kind of thing you know, is really more code quality about embedding some of these things directly in the yeah. code, and it, it, it's going to be a mixture. But we're, you know, hopefully we're trying to make it as much as possible. Um, you know, it, it, well, I call it soft coding or, or indirectly driven stuff. Um, you know, but, but and thinking about that, Norm, it, it would be a challenge to try to differentiate those because you never know until you never know where where it was after embedded. After their implement, right? Until after development, and then you know you can't name them a priori. Like we're going right. to hard code this, right. you know. <clears throat> so but that but would be, that but would but be as an example of one of the things that we want to be able to do also is Great. on the types and states, you can also mark them as active and inactive and. And, and that should also be able to, you know, keep them around. I mean, just again, here we go. It's, it's types and states. It's, it's states for types and states. But you know, they just basically say this thing is still in the system, but it's inactive. And so again, that you know, we should be able to then, when you're displaying the list of states, you know, we just say, well, we made it inactive in our implementation, so it doesn't show up anywhere. I won't describe anywhere. the look on. I won't describe the look on Virginia's face right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good that's a good suggestion. Yeah. So so the goal moving forward is, is really you know to do do the least amount of hard coding, mm -hmm. but that it's really more of an implement development implementation issue than a than a design right issue. Right. Yeah. But but it would be nice again what you're saying for implementing it to know which ones have been hard coded somewhere yeah. in the system so we know. And so that I, I take that as a as a as a sort of a charge. Of how can we maybe at least document that in a better way, so yeah. it's clear which ones are the ones that you can manipulate and which ones you you know you really shouldn't, or you can't because the system may not even come up if you do that, right? Norm, this is fabulous. Does anybody else have questions? Sunny. We did tape this session, so if there were people who were unable to attend, or if you just want to watch it over and over and over, over again. you can. On Saturday night. <laughs> okay. That was great, Norm. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks. Take All care. Right. Thanks, Norm. Bye. Bye. All right.